there. It's black bright. Bringing you some more news about vans and cars and what's going to be happening beyond 2022. There's going to be some mandatory um, safety features installed in cars. Every car that's purchased after 2022. This is the EU legislation, but apparently UK is committed to abide by it, whether or not we leave Brexit. Now, there's seven safety features that are going to be in place. So let me tell you what they are. Go to my little book or my big book. OK, the EU is introducing a range of mandatory safety features in new vehicles from 2022. UK is expected to follow suit regardless of what happens with Brexit. New minimum vehicle safety standards. Um, there are seven of them. All new vans and cars will need to be fitted with the latest safety technology. I'd imagine that that's going to cost car makers a lot of money. And it's, I don't know. I mean, they're already struggling with all these new changes that they've got to do, you know, with the E6 and whether or not cars are fitted with the latest emission fuel so people don't get fined by going into low emission areas. So they've already got that to contend with. And now they've got these seven mandatory safety features, which are one, intelligent speed assistance. Now, this is to make sure you don't go over the limit. <laughs> Imagine those 20 zones and those 30 mile an hour zones and you're limited to stick into that how frustrating that's going to be. Well, what's going to happen if you try to go over it and you press the accelerator, this alarm, a loud alarm is going to go off. So you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. So they're going to have these safety, um, these speed limiting things in them. Um, they're also going to have, which they have in some cars anyway, reversing cameras and rever re reversing detectors. So those are already in some cars. But yeah, that's going to be a mandatory feature because in or ordinarily now, I think it's a paid extra. Um, I know in my car, it was in the car I had before, but it's not in the car I've got now. So, and I, I found it very useful, to be honest. Um, then they're going to have drowsiness detector monitors. So it's going to, this makes me laugh, honestly, because it makes me think of the racial, the, um, what do you call it, the biometric facial recognition, because what this is going to do, it's going to alert, um, I don't know what's going to happen, but it's monitoring your eyelids to see if they're, how often they're flickering. It's going to monitor whether or not your head is tilting from side to side. It's going to monitor, um, the way you drive, your pattern of driving, if it's different, it's going to be doing all of that. It's going to de detect eyelid closure, rate of blinks, nodding head, and it's going to learn your um, driving pattern. Wow. Um, apparently, this is because so many long distance drivers have accidents. Um, it's also going to be an autonomous emergency braking. 21% of the cars already have it fitted so that it if you don't break, it'll break for you. I don't know quite how that works. Um, there's going to be a lane keeping assistant. So if you depart from the lane you're supposed to be in, an alarm's going to go off. This is also to do with, you know, whether or not you're feeling drowsy, whether or not you're tired and all that kind of stuff. It's amazing, isn't it? There's going to be an event data recorder, like a black box. It's going to keep a chronology of every single action you have taken. So in particular, car insurers want this, you know, so just before an accident, what were you doing, how you were doing it. So it's going to be doing all of that and it's going to be mandatory. So supposing you were going over the speed limit or supposing um, you were turning when you weren't supposed to be turning. Whatever you do is going to keep a full chronology of all your actions. So if there is an accident and you're in the wrong, there's no way they're going to be relying on photographs and goodness knows what. You're going to have a black box fitted, whether you like it or not. The last thing is improved seat belts. I don't know what they're going to do to improve that. I can't stand them. They blow, I feel as I'm being strangled with my one. But I just thought I'd let you know about those new safety features that are coming into force, mandatory 
after 2022. You've still got a few years. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with the old cars. I hope they're not going to make us sell them. Um, like they like they're almost forcing us to do with the um, with by telling us that we can't drive certain um, cars after 2020. I think it's if it's lower than 1953, not 53. 53 is what. Um, 53 is what's 53? Is that 2003? I think yeah. I never know those numbers. Anyway, it's um. I think it's 2003. So if it's below that, you're going to be kicked to the curb, I think, um, with regard to your car. I think that applies to diesel, though. I think with petrol cars, I think it goes up a bit more. I think you've got a bit more leeway. But, yeah, you can check all that out. Um, if you put ULEV into the Google search and you put in your registration details it would tell you whether or not your car is fit is well well needs to be upgraded basically or whether you're going to elicit a charge you're going to get a charge for driving into certain parts of london if you're out of london it's not going to affect you but if you're inside london it's worth doing that u for umbrella l for lima e for echo v for victor just put it in your Google search. It will come up. It allows you to put in your registration number and it will tell you whether or not your car needs to be upgraded to avoid the charge. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you go into London, you are going to be hit with a fine if you're not careful. Um, only some cars are affected now, but there are some. It's going gonna, it's gonna to widen um, in 2020. So just make sure you're, you're in that area. Anyway, that's all for now. I hope you found this useful. Bye bye.